Welcome back guys. Today we're installing a Transgo shift kit on our 4L60E. It's that we're taking it one step further and installing this Coravette servo as well. This is gonna give us much firmer shifts as well as increase the longevity of our clutches. Uh, faster shifts mean less heat. So we're gonna flip our transmission over. We wanna get to the valve body area, which means we're gonna have to take off the pan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's important to note, you can install a shift kit and the Corvette servo without removing the transmission. We have ours out because it's a little bit easier to show you guys and we had some other things we had to fix. So if you wanted to check out the video of us pulling this transmission, you can check it out up here. Uh, to pull off this pan, it's 16 half inch bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and take those all off. And this might take a little prying, but in theory it should just come right off. We're just gonna set this right there. And now we can just pull out our filter. And we'll set that in the pan like so. All right, and let's check out what we got here. Oh look, comes with one, perfect. All right, so we have some instructions, a whole mess of springs, a new gasket, and our separator plate gaskets. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is install the Coravette servo. Uh, to do that, we need to remove this. So we're going to grab onto it with a pair of locking pliers and then we should be able to just pry that ring out. And you can gently wiggle out the servo. Now, you might barely be able to see, we've wiggled this out a little bit. There is a blue O-ring here. What you wanna do is get underneath it and pull on it. And that's gonna give it enough slack for you to pull this out all the way. There we go. And now we can put this in our box. Then you can just pull off this top part and you're gonna leave that right there. We're gonna be using that. And the rest of the servo pulls out just like that. So now that we have this removed, we can take off this spring. We'll be reusing that. And we can remove this housing and set that to the side. First thing we wanna do is remove this snap ring. We can do that with just a small screwdriver. and make sure to keep a good hold on it because there is a spring there. And we can remove this washer and that spring. And now we can slide the pin out. With those things removed, we can take a small vise or C-clamp. And what we're gonna do is clamp this down to compress the spring. And we should be able to take out that snap ring. There we go, and then we can just work that out. And we'll set that to the side. And then we're just gently going to release the pressure on this. There we go. And now we can remove that and we have access to this spring, which is going to be replaced with a spring from our shift kit. So we're gonna open up our first bag of the shift kit and we're going to be installing this blue spring. Since we're using the Transgo Coravette servo as well as this shift kit, we aren't gonna be reusing this housing and we'll set that to the side. We're going to reinstall our original spring and add the blue spring out of the Transgo shift kit box. And they should nest in there just like that. And now we can reinstall our outer plate. We're gonna use our clamp and clamp down on this to compress those springs and then we'll reinstall our snap ring. And you just have to work that into the slot and then push in. There we go, and that's reinstalled and we can release this. Next, 
we need to install these seals and they just slip around. The little one slips around the top here, just like so. And our second one goes around this much larger ring here. We just slip it into the groove and get everything lined up and that's all set. Now we can reassemble our servo. And again, we're using the Transgo Corvette servo instead of the old one we had. So we're going to take the red O-ring and put that on this one. There we go. And we can reassemble this. Now the shift kit comes with these gold shims and it recommends we install both and then check the play and I'll show you how to do that. So let's get this all put back together. This thing like that, this thing like that over that seal, make sure that doesn't get pinched. There we go. And we can slide our pin back through, maybe. And there we are. And we can reinstall the spring, the washer, and we'll flip it upside down and reinstall the C-clip. Then this spring is going to go over the back end. We hit our cover with a coat of black paint just so it flowed with the rest of the transmission colors. We're gonna take this whole assembly, keeping that spring on the back, insert both spacers just set right on top of there, and then the cover goes, oh, sorry. This thing goes on like so with all the numbers facing up, slips onto the pin. Okay, sure. And we can put this on. And to test whether we need one, two, or zero shims, we don't install our new blue O-ring. And we'll slide this whole assembly in. Reinstall the snap ring we put in our box earlier. Oh, did you get that? <laughs> and to reinstall the snap ring, we push that in as far as we can get it and work the snap ring in there. So now we've got our servo reinstalled with the snap ring and we should have about an eighth of an inch of play when I push on it, which we don't quite have. So what we're gonna do is pull out one of the gold shims. So we took out one of our golden shim rings here, and now we've got about an eighth of an inch of play, and that's what we're looking for. Now that we have the proper tolerances for our servo, we can use a new blue O-ring and put that on the outside cover and reinstall it for the final time. And we've got a little bit of trans fluid to lube everything up. There we go. And we will slide that in. With our new servo installed, we need to double check that we can turn the input shafts both directions by hand, so I can do that pretty pretty easily. So I think we've got the right amount of shimming in there and we should be good to go. And that's our Transgo Corvette servo installed with the upgraded springs from the shift kit. And we're gonna move on to the valve body area. We're moving on to the accumulator next. Uh, we're gonna remove these three 10 mils and get into it. And that should just slide right off. We're gonna set these bolts to the side for now and to get basically all the guts out of this. We're gonna take it and, damn it, I was really hoping that would work. Perfect. Now that we've got this opened up and made a thorough mess, we're just going to reinstall it as Transgo recommends. So we're gonna grab these three shims. Well, it depends on what you're going for. If you want full race and you have a high stall converter, use 
three. If you want very firm shifts for street and strip, you'll use two of these. And if you just want a nice firm shift, you'll use one. We're just gonna be using two because we don't have a super high st stall torque converter, but we still want some crispiness to that. We'll set that other one to the side and install these two, just like so. Then we're going to use the spring seat with the bulge face up. And then we are going to use the new springs. First one in is this blue one. And that'll go right there. Okay, I'm trusting you Transgo. All right. And even though this plunger came out this direction, we're going to install it flipped upside down, like so. And then we're gonna put this orange spring right on top and then we can reinstall this. We're gonna hold on to these springs just in case. We don't wanna throw anything away. Uh, I know this may not seem like the proper thing to do, but Transgo assures us that it's okay and we're gonna go with it. So to reinstall this, we put this longest bolt screw lined up for, to that hole and we'll set it in place. And then we'll grab our three screws and we're going to push down firmly and we're gonna go little by little in a circular pattern so that that gets seated properly. Now that the, we've gotten these mostly tightened up, we're gonna torque them to 120 inch pounds or 12, uh, 10 foot pounds. All right, and we're good to go there. The next part we're moving to is all in the valve body area. We need to disconnect the electrical connectors. One there, one here, one here, one here, one there. And this harness is hardwired to this solenoid, so we're going to remove it. Next, we're gonna remove this by going into this little thing here, this little cavity, and fishing out the clip, like so. And we're gonna put that in the box, and then this should just slide right out. We'll put that in the box as well, and we'll be able to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. Put those in the box. Then this solenoid will slide right out with a little wiggling. There we go. And we can just flop that whole thing over the edge right there and that'll be out of the way. Now we're gonna start taking off the bolts that are holding the valve body onto the case. First thing we wanna do is remove this 13 millimeter nut that's holding on the shifter here. and we're gonna set this whole thing in the box. We're gonna move to 10 millimeter nuts around the valve body, so we'll start here. And place these all in the box, and then we'll work our way around. And we're gonna remove all these 10 millimeter bolts and the dipstick bottom thing. We're gonna pull that out and put all these in the box. Missed one right there. And then we've got a handful of eight mils we have to take off and then the valve body should just lift right up. So these two on here can stay in and we just have to remove these three. And put those in the box. Now our valve body should just lift right out after we disconnect this last electrical connector. Now we can lift the valve body off the case and be careful of this. As we raise this up, we'll be able to slide this all the way out. And that, that piece just fell out of that right there. Perfect. And we can set the valve body on a different workspace. Now that we have the valve body off and in a clean work area, first thing we wanna do is remove this clip right here. So this is gonna be in the way of us sliding that out. So we're just gonna twist it up out of the way and we can remove this clip. There we go, set that to the side. This may just slide right out for you, but we had to flip ours over 
And if we just take a flathead screwdriver and push in there, that'll just pop right out. There we go. And we can remove the spring. Once that's out, you can flip it back over and then you have to work out the rest of this, just gently sliding it little by little in the spots you can see. A curved pick sometimes works to press it out a little bit more. You can grab it at the end with a pair of pliers and gently wiggle that out. There we go. And we want the tightly wound purple spring right here. So let's open that up, grab that guy. And we are going to replace the yellow spring and slide this whole assembly right back in. And this might take a little finagling. I guess I didn't really need to pull that thing all the way out. And then spring, retainer, and we can reinstall our clip. The next step that's recommended by Transgo is for uh, the manual valve release. If we grind this edge down to a bevel, uh, that will give us a faster reverse release. Uh, that's not something we're super worried about, so we're gonna leave it stock for now, and if we wanna address that later, we can do that. So for right now, we're gonna leave that be. And next, we're gonna move on to the actuator valve. Now, the actuator valve is held in by this bracket, which is has an eight millimeter bolt, so we're going to loosen that. And set that bracket to the side. With that removed, we can remove this clip and we should be able to slide out this actuator. Boom. And then same procedure as this other valve, we're going to slide out the retainer. So far the, curt, the hooked pick has been the tool to use to get those out and you just work it out little by little. There we go. And we'll set that right there. And we should be able to grab our spring that's in there simply by dumping it out. So we are actually going to install from the same pack, this white spring inside of that other spring. So that's gonna slip in there just like that. And we can reinsert it followed by the retainer. So now with the retainer in, we can push it all the way to this fourth slot and we'll reinstall the clip. And we can reinstall the actuator. Then we reinstall our clip with these little feet touching the solenoid. So it'll go like this and we'll reinstall our eight millimeter bolt. Next, we're gonna move on to changing out this accumulator spring. To do that, we have to pop out this roll pin. And the best way I've found to do it is to take a small flathead screwdriver and reaching inside of the valve body, we can pry up gently on that and we'll be able to grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers. So we struggled for a hot minute trying to get out this. We finally got it sorted after accidentally breaking our two, three shift solenoid. This is typically in this end and it's just held in by a clip. When we stood it up on its end, it ended up breaking off the electrical connector. So if you're going to do this, I would highly recommend removing that. It's easy to do and might save you 40 bucks. But this is the tool we ended up making to help remove the accumulator valve. And what it is is the end of a slide hammer uh, tool that we welded a Allen key to, ground it down a little bit, uh, and I'll show you how it works. So what we're able to do is insert the end of this right into here, screw on our slide hammer, and then we're able to just tap it out. There we go. And that's removed and we can get in there to replace the spring. 
So we just fish that out with a hook. There we are. And we're gonna be replacing this with the red spring from this pack. We're using red instead of white. In the Transgo instructions for this shift kit, it makes you look at your second piston of the servo. These last three numbers on this inner part here designate which spring you're supposed to use. So our last three numbers are 553. Five, five, that says we should use the red spring instead of the white spring. This may be different for you, but all we have to do is reinstall this red spring, which slides right in there. And then your accumulator valve has to be reinstalled with this U shape facing towards the flat surface of the valve body. So that'll be reinserted like this. And you wanna check inside this hole and make sure the dowel on the valve is lined up into the spring and it's not crooked. So we've got that pushed in. Our spring looks straight in this hole. We can reinstall our roll pin here, slide that in until it's flush with that surface. And that's all for that step. Next step, we're going to optional step number five. You're only supposed to do this step if you wish to add holds first gear to any speed in M1 and be able to go back to M1 at any speed. I would just skip that one. Okay. This kit also includes a spacer for the one, two shift valve, and that will hold first gear for to any speed you want. We're not gonna use that in this kit, but the instructions can walk you through that. Next, we're gonna turn our attention to this cover right here. This is held on by three eight millimeter bolts and there's a couple springs we're gonna replace in that. Now this plate is going to have some resistance. It's, you can see it's already being pushed out by a spring. So just be careful when you start removing these bolts. Okay. And we can remove that plate, move our bolts to the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to reuse this spring. We don't have to touch anything there. And we're going to remove this yellow spring and replace it with our new yellow spring in this bag. So that's just gonna slide in right there and we can put our cover back on. And this might take a little bit of, little bit of doing because we're going to have to compress these springs and reinstall the screws. The last step in the valve body is to remove the converter regulator valve, which is on this side right here. To do that, we're going to take a flathead screwdriver, remove this clip, and you saw that spring out, so you're gonna wanna hold on to the end of that. We'll set the clip to the side, remove the retainer, and we should be able to just work this out, same as some of the other ones. And then we should be able to dump out our spring. And there's one more piece in there we have to work out. If you can see here, we can just barely see it right there. We can try and grab the end and work it out a little bit. And there's the other piece for that. There are three types of this regulator valve. So you may have any of three types. This new style will replace all three of the older types. So what we're going to do is take and screw this into the threaded end of our new valve, like so. And we're going to install this with the blue spring. And this valve needs to be able to just fall out of the case. It needs to be loose on the sidewalls. So they recommend to slide it in and out 20 times in the bore. And if it's still sticking, then we're gonna have to slide it all the way in, tap it with a hammer a few times, try and get it to widen out the side walls of that bore, and we should be good. So we're gonna just push it in and out, see if we can get it to slide right in and out. I think we might be okay, so we'll just play with it a little bit. That's feeling pretty good. We're gonna slide it in and see if it just falls out. Yep. So that means we're looking good there. So now we can remove this screw, slide in our valve, our retainer, and reinstall the clip. Now that we finished the valve body, we're moving on to the separator plate, which has to be removed 
because we're gonna be drilling a bunch of holes in it. So first thing we wanna do is take a magnet or I guess you could just grab them, but the magnet makes them a lot easier, makes them easier to keep track of. We're going to remove the seven check balls that are sitting on top of the separator plate. Here, 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 there, right there, and right there. And there's one right there in the middle as well. Perfect. If any of those check balls are stuck or embedded in the separator plate, it's probably a good idea to replace it with a new separator plate. This one is one we replaced, uh, also comes from Transgo. Uh, so far it's been great. You can check out the video on that right here. But now that we have those removed, we can go ahead and remove the accumulator and the stiffener plate. and we're just gonna set that to the side. And we need to remove our stiffener plate, which is these three eight mils right here. And we're gonna take the stiffener plate, very gently peel that off. All right, we're just gonna pull that right up. And if you have any gasket that's stuck to the valve body or to the stiffener plate or accumulator, just gently scrape those off and we'll use the new gaskets. Now that we have our separator plate removed, we're gonna take off these gaskets and discard that. Ours are coming off super easily just because we very recently replaced it. Yours might not be as simple, but any leftover gasket just scrape off. What we're gonna be doing is drilling out specific holes on this plate, I'll show you in just a second, um, to 0 0.093, which is 3 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, the kit includes drill bits, so we'll open this up, grab those, and I'll sh show you what holes we need to take care of. This larger one is the 0 0.093, and they include a 0 0.082, which we'll be using as well. So I've got a piece of wood here so I don't drill into my table. First holes we're looking at, this hole to 0 0.093. And that one's okay if it's already bigger. I was just double checking, it looks good. And then we're going to be moving on to this hole right here. Now we're gonna move down this left side. We're going to need to drill out this hole. Now if you want your one, two shift to be a short shift, you use the 0.082. If you're using this shift kit in a full race or high stall application, you can drill this hole out to 0.093. So we're gonna switch drill bits and drill ours out to 0.082. Switching back to the 0.093 drill bit, we need to drill out this hole right here. This tiny hole right here, if your plate has it, if it doesn't have it, you can just skip this one. And this other small hole in the bottom corner. And sliding over, going more to the center, we have this hole where a check ball goes. The hole right above it needs to be drilled out to 0 0.093. And this hole as well, for us, we're gonna dr drill it out to 0 0.093. If you're doing a high stall conversion or full race, you're gonna wanna drill this out to 0 0.101. So that's all the drilling we need to do. Now that we've got all of our holes drilled, we're gonna turn our attention to this filter. So that sticks out the back like so. And what we can do is simply pop it out by pressing the tab and pushing down and it'll just pull right out. What we wanna do is drill two 16th of an inch holes in the very top of this screen. And we'll clean that off. What those holes do is if this filter gets clogged or is dirty, the screens will get stuck together and cause low line pressure and burn up clutches. So that's just an extra safety precaution to take. So it'll always have a, at least a little bit of flow, but we're also going to install this wire spacer. And to do that, we're gonna pop the filter back in. I find it's easiest to hook one edge onto the separator plate like so, and then just push, there we are. And this wire separator just slides in like so. 
and it looks a little weird, but this part's gonna be just sat in the valve body and keep those screens from closing up. Next, we're moving on to the shift kits boost valve and regulator spring, which is actually inside of the pump. So we can access that part right here. It's filled with trans fluids. So we're gonna try and dry that up a little bit. And the goal here is to be able to see the snap ring that is holding this in. All right, so if you look in there, you can see the two little holes for the snap ring. We're gonna grab our snap ring pliers. And with our snap ring pliers, we're going to try and get in there. And we can release that. We'll set that snap ring to the side. And we're gonna grab a pick and try and work that out. There we are. Ooh, my word. Okay, so now that we have this out, we can set it to the side and we have to fish out our springs and there should be two of them. Hey, got them both. And there's still the regulator valve deep inside there. Uh, we don't have to remove that. So we're just gonna move on. We're gonna take orange spring, the little one, and drop it in there. Make sure it gets lined up on the post. And our larger spring needs to go over that. Perfect. And this kit also includes a replacement boost valve and a spacer. So we're going to be removing that from the package here. And that looks kind of like that. This, this part is gonna get the aluminum spacer and slide back into here. Since we have this spacer on here and this part that slides in here and we have to install it like this, we don't want anything slipping out. So I'm going to be using a little bit of red trans gel to hold everything in place. And to do that, put just a little dab of it on there and that should stick it on there so we can flip it upside down without it coming off. And we'll do just a little dab on the edges here so it sticks in place a little bit better as well. And we can drop that in. There we go. And we should be able to flip it upside down without that sliding too much. With that done, we slide it back in place. Gently work that in. The shift kit comes with a new snap ring. So we're going to push down on this guy with a screwdriver. Gonna set that in there, push down with that on a screwdriver. Reinstall our snap ring like so. Make sure that's fully seated in there. And that's all set. Next, we're gonna grab the yellow accumulator spring. We're gonna remove this spring. And what we have to do next, there's actually a accumulator in the bottom of this attached to this post. So what we're gonna try and do is wiggle that out. This may not look great to y'all, but what I'm doing here is gently pulling out that accumulator using the post just by wiggling it back and forth. Oh yeah, there we go. Now that is out. This may be plastic on your vehicle, but we've replaced ours with an aluminum one. It's a little bit stronger, more durable. So now we are going to install our yellow spring. Just set it in there like so, and you'll feel it seat. Then we're going to reinstall our post, and we're actually going to flip this upside down and install it down like this. Oh, man. And be careful, it may shoot transmission fluid out of that hole. Money shot right there. Gently, oh God, gently push that in and that's gonna push up a bunch of trans fluid. And that should hang out in there because of some friction. Now, we can move on to reinstalling our separator plates with the new gaskets. So let me go grab those. So looking at these two paper gaskets, we see one has a CA. That one goes on the case side and we have one that says VB and that goes on the valve body side. So we know the separator plate is gonna go on something like that. So we're gonna put the paper gasket with the CA for the case side on just like that and make sure everything's looking lined up and we'll set our separator plate on there. Then we will put on our gasket that has the VB for the valve body side. And what we're gonna do next is take, you could take any two 10 millimeter bolts and insert them in holes. Or what we have here from our last transmission rebuild are studs that we cut the top off and ground them down. And we're gonna be using these to help align the valve body when we set it on there and hold this in place as we install the stiffener plate and the accumulator. So I like to put these one right here in this corner hole, 
And I'm going to insert this other one between where these two check balls go right here. Perfect. And that's just going to hold our gaskets in place and our separator plate from wiggling around while we install the stiffener plate and the accumulator. So we're gonna grab the stiffener plate right here, set that on there with those eight millimeter bolts and just get those loosely hand tight. That's on there pretty well. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our accumulator with the upgraded springs in there. So that's gonna get set on there like so. And we're gently gonna push down while we get those started. And we're gonna cinch these down all the way, working little by little to make sure everything goes on straight. And we're gonna tighten these 10 millimeter bolts to 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds. And same for the eight millimeter bolts on the stiffener plate. Now that we've got those torqued down, we're gonna grab our check balls and install them in the following holes. One right here, one right here one right here one right here one in this top hole one right there and the last one goes in this center hole right here now we're going to grab the valve body and using these two dowels to align everything we're going to just get it started on the case there we are and we need to reinstall our linkage here. And that simply goes in by taking, you might have to maneuver stuff around a little bit, but it should slide into this guy. We rotate it. It can be a little finicky and it might not seem like it's in all the way, uh, but as soon as you drop down the valve body, everything should line up. So I've got that in right there. And we just have to gently set it on there, trying not to knock any of those check balls loose. There we go. And now we can reinstall our, a few of our other bolts and then we'll remove the dowels. The three longest 10 millimeter screws or bolts go in this thing. So we'll get those just started so everything's lined up, nothing moves and we can remove our two dowels. So we're going to reinstall this shorter bolt with the dipstick stop, like so. And this other shorter 10 millimeter bolt goes in this side right here. And all the rest of these just get dropped in. And we're gonna grab our three eight millimeter bolts and those go in these three holes. And we're gonna torque all of these to 120 inch pounds as well. We're just working all of them slowly by surely before going to the final torque, just so everything is good. And we'll torque down these eight mil bolts to the same 120 inch pounds. I've double checked all of these several times, but you do, there's a lot of bolts here and you don't wanna miss one. So just take your time with it and we can reinstall this spring it hooks in that back one, and this is a 13 millimeter bolt that we have to tighten down. And the detent spring bolt gets tightened to 18 foot pounds. Next, we're gonna be reinserting our solenoids that we took out earlier. I'm going to put a little dab of transmission fluid on those O-rings just so it just slips in there. This one was orange from the factory and it was <coughs> broken. But we got another one, it clips in just like that. Before we put in the one on this side, we have to reconnect the electrical connectors. So to do that, we just flip this whole Johnny. So this guy's gonna slide here, making sure to just gently work that O-ring in so it doesn't get pinched. There we go. And we're gonna take the two smallest 10 millimeter bolts that are in our box and tighten those up. And these will also get tightened to 120 inch pounds. Now we can reinstall our other solenoid that goes on this side. Now that we have the electrical connector plugged in, we're gonna hit it with a little dab of transmission fluid and slip it right in. And reinstall our clip. And we're gonna start connecting the rest of these connectors. So this big flat one slips right over those teeth there. 
and it'll click into place. And then these little plastic circles will push down onto the valve body. Everything will get tucked in all nice, very nice. This connector plugs in here, this one right here. And this big flat one goes with the clip part up top right there. And we can swivel these down and plug both of these in. There's one, there's two. Now we need to grab our filter. We actually have a new filter uh, because we replaced the clutches and we replaced a couple other things not too long ago. There's a little bit of excess metal that got caught up in our filter uh, just from normal wear and tear. So we picked up a fresh one and we're gonna be installing this. It simply pushes down into this hole right here and you just work it in there until it sits flat. Now we are going to degrease and prep this surface for the gasket, which Transgo included in their shift kit. So we're going to clean that off, clean off the pan, and we'll get that all put back together. So we'll put our gasket on, make sure all the holes are lined up. That looks good. This shallow part of the pan is going to go towards the rear. So we can flip that on there, line up the holes and Blam, Bob's your uncle. All right, then you're going to retrieve all your transmission pan bolts from the box and put these in. Now we're gonna tighten all these to nine foot pounds. Perfect. So that's our trans all put back together. Uh, we're gonna throw it back in the burb and see how she feels. going. That's the first step. Oh man, that first gear shift just slammed in. And what, we're going 10, 15? All right guys, uh, when I really get on it, you can't hear me talk. So we're up to temps. I'm going to go ahead and just let her rip. shift is super crisp. Let's do one more. Ooh. The first shift feels really good, uh, very crisp, and the rest, there's definitely, it feels a lot quicker uh, to me personally, but um, you probably saw the camera guy <laughs> lose it a little bit. So first thoughts on the new shift kit, it feels great. It wasn't that bad to install. We could have done it while the transmission was still in the car. Uh, if you're doing the Corvette servo, your exhaust might be in the way a little bit. I will put that disclaimer there. But if you guys like the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe for more, subscribe for more, and we'll catch you on the next one.